this shit? What's up, Fight Fans? I'm the Mortal Kombat Annihilation of Mixed Martial Arts, Tommy Toehold, and UFC 190 is about to go the fuck down. Ronda is ready for another 15 second performance. Tommy, I'm not really sure I'm gonna get this card. I wanna get it, but I need it to be super fucking awesome. Playing Fantasy MMA at countermove.com is exactly how you make UFC 190 super fucking awesome. You wanna know how to play? Go to the How It Works tab. Everything is laid out right fucking here. I even made a little video. Let's watch. What's up, my fans? Today, I'm going to teach you how to play fantasy MMA at countermove.com. The first step is to select a game. There are free games, small games, and big games for all major MMA events. Next, you're going to pick a team of five fighters. Each game is played over the course of a single fight card, and you have $25,000 for $10 to draft a team of five fighters. Once you pick your team, you're ready for the last step. Score points and win. Once the fights begin, you get points based on how your fighters perform. Points are awarded for strikes landed, submissions attempted, knockdowns, dominant positions, rounds one, and knockout or submission bonuses. The team with the most points at the end of the night wins the tournament. It's that simple, fight fans. Sign up today at countermove.com. YouTubeception. All right, let's go back to the main screen, fight fans. We want the big money game, my game. It's $8,000 prize pool, 25 bucks gets you in, top 50 payout. You hit the enter now button, and boom, you are brought to the team selection screen. Remember, fight fans, we want stops, and we want them fast. Now let's break down this whole fucking card and find out who is going to be the best picks ever. All right, first up, we've got Hugo Wolverine taking on Guido Canetti. Hugo has seven decision wins in eight fights. Canetti lost his UFC debut, does not have a ton of experience. Vienna probably via decision, and he is way too fucking expensive. Don't put him on your team. Next up, we've got Victor Miranda taking on Clint Hester. Miranda has five first round finishes in his last five wins, but only one UFC victory. Hester has averaged 50 fantasy points or less in his last three games. Too many question marks on Miranda. Not enough productivity from Hester. Avoid this fight. Next up, we've got Yuri Alcantara taking on Leandro Issa. Alcantara has two first round KOs in the UFC, and he has a first round KO against Ricardo Lamas. Issa has two UFC wins, but nowhere near the high level experience of Alcantara. Alcantara most likely to get the stop here but based on his recent scoring, probably not worth the 5,300. Next up, we've got Warley Alves and Nordin Taleb. Alves doesn't have a ton of high-level experience yet, and he has a 40% decision rate. Taleb has not finished a fight in the UFC. Alves probably gets a decision here considering Taleb has never been subbed. Alves is most likely form of stoppage. Best to avoid this one. Next up, we've got Patrick Cummins taking on Rafael Cavalcante. Cavalcante has dangerous power. 11 out of his 12 wins come via knockout, including Yoel Romero. Cummins is a strong wrestler, but he's fallen to hard strikers. Cavalcante catches him early, gets the KO, and at 4,700, the price is right, motherfuckers. Next up, we've got Damian Maya and Neil Magny. Maya is very hard to put away, but hasn't had a finish since 2012. Magny is on a hot streak with seven wins straight, four via stoppage. Magny's streak continues on Saturday, but likely doesn't get a finish. Even so, will probably probably score near the hundreds. A very solid pick for the price. Next up, we've got Claudia Gadella taking on Jessica Aguilar. Gadella has a 66% finish rate and took the unstoppable killing machine that is Joanna Janjacek to a split decision. Aguilar has eight sub wins, but only one finish in her last nine victories and zero UFC fights. Aguilar is a tougher one than she looks though. I think Gadella wins, but be very weary of this one. I don't think it'll be a high score. Next up, we've got Bigfoot Silva taking on Soa the Hulk. When Bigfoot wins, he wins big. Problem is he hasn't won since he beat the Ream down and he's been KO'd or TK five times in his last six losses. This is a step up in competition for the Hulk, but every win he has had has been a stop, and he's only been KO'd once, and that was back in 2007. This fight will be stopped, and so the Hulk is leaving with a win. He is a solid pick at 4,900. Next up, we've got Big Nog taking on Stefan Struve. Big Nog is a legend. He's got 21 subs and 34 wins, and despite the two-fight skid, he is a dangerous motherfucker still. Struve also has a high finish rate, but hasn't looked the same since his return, and when he loses, he usually gets knocked out. They're in Rio. This is a big night for Big Nog. He almost always Always scores around 100 or higher when he wins. A solid pick, but the 5200 might spread your budget a little thin. Next up, we've got Delena Lopez taking on Heginaldo Vieira. This is the tough Brazil bantamweight final. Lopez has 12 subs in 18 wins and seven stops in his last eight pro wins. Vieira also submission heavy with nine stops. Lopez via submission most likely, but don't put 5300 on it with two unknowns. Same goes for the tough Brazil lightweight final between Glyco Franca and Fernando Bruno. Both guys have looked like world beaters outside UFC level competition. Franca is more likely to get a stop as Bruno is more heavy on decisions, but again, I would just avoid these two fights altogether. Up next, we got the co-main event. It's Shogun taking on Lil Nog. When Shogun wins, he wins big. This guy scores a shit ton of fantasy points and victories. Problem is, he's lost four of his last five, two in devastating fashion. Lil Nog is a roller coaster when it comes to points scored. He was KO'd in his last fight, but previous to that, he had a decision win over Rashad Evans. If Shogun wins, he's probably going to win big, and if he loses, it'll probably be a decision where he scores very few points. Shogun is high risk, high reward, but he could score well into the 100 with a win Saturday. At 5,400, he just might be worth the gamble. 
And finally, the main event, the women's bantamweight title is on the line. Ronda Rousey takes on Betch Cohea. Fight fans, Ronda Rousey is guaranteed points. That is why she costs 6,000. 11 wins, 11 stops. She is a fucking killing machine. And Cohea is her least impressive opponent with seven decision wins and nine victories and very few high level opponents. I don't think Betch can knock Ronda out. I don't think she's even going to get that opportunity. Look for this one to end fast and violently. If you can somehow manage a 6,000 on your team, you are some kind of wizard and I applaud you. All right, now that we've seen the matchups, it's time to pick a team of five fighters. Pick whoever the fuck you want to pick. I'm going with Big Nog, Cavalcante, Shogun, Magni, and so are the Hulk. Once you've chosen your team, hit the play now button, invite some friends, and from now to fight night, you can change your team as much as you fucking want. For everybody at CounterMove Fantasy MMA at CounterMove.com, I'm Tommy Toehold. See you on the leaderboards, motherfuckers.